Join us and help us continue to support the many talented people of our community. Learn how to get your business highlighted on Lacrosse Local. Go to lacrosselocal.com and click on advertise. The Pump House Regional Arts Center brings you live, heartfelt performances from gifted singer songwriters. Enjoy original music brought to stage by area mainstay musicians and sought after regional bands. Check out the concert series online and pick up your tickets at thepumphouse.org. We sat down with the boys of Dead Amsterdam. We got into their musical backgrounds, how they came together, opening for major acts, recording at the infamous Pachyderm Recording Studio, and what's coming up for this local band. You can find more conversations, food reviews, live music, weekend picks, and events on our website, lacrosselocal.com. I'm Amy. And I'm Brent. And this is Lacrosse Local. My name is Joel. Uh, I'm a vocalist for uh, Dead Amsterdam, and I was actually born in uh, Fort Lewis, Washington, over in Washington State. Moved over to Wisconsin when I was four. But uh, what got me into music, really, uh, come from a musical family. Mom and dad were always listening to music when I was growing up as a kid, and then kind of got me into rock music was um, my sister had a boyfriend a long time ago. He drove a Trans Am, and he was giving me a ride someplace, and he was blaring uh, actually of all things Mudvayne and the his Trans Am. And uh, when I got in, he it was just it hit my ears just right, and I was like, "What is this?" And he's like, "It's Mudvayne, little dude." And I was like, "This is awesome!" And it kind of just took off from there. And I just progressed into listening to rock music all the way through high school and metal, and you know, and then I just kind of progressed down the road from there. But I, I take inspiration, aspirations, I guess, inspiration from all kinds of different music and musical backgrounds, but uh, that's kind of it for me, really. My name is Shane Loken, bassist for Dead Amsterdam, born in La Crosse, Wisconsin. Music's always been a huge part of my family's life as well. Grew up, you know, Kiss was my favorite band when I was three to four years old, just like my daughter now. And, and um, you know, I was singing the Osmosis album by Ozzy or the Black album by Metallica by the time I was five years old, singing every song and rocking to them and was big into music class in elementary school and through high school. And my Aunt Lori, who had passed away in before my time in like 1982, I believe, she had a, a really old acoustic guitar. I don't know if it was anything special, but my dad said when I was I think about, I want to say eight years old, nine years old, said, if you can learn how to play one song on that guitar, I will buy you a guitar. And a lot of my influences at the time were a lot of bass players, Cliff Burton from Metallica and a bunch of other thrash bass players, and then later on to other ones like Leave. And I learned how to play Smoke on the Water, surprise, surprise, and, and uh, Seven Nation <laughs> Army. About three months later, Christmas morning, I opened up a Fender Squire P bass, and the rest is history from there. I started playing music daily and eventually started playing in bands, and yeah, and here we are now. Right on. So um, my name is Levi Tanner. I was born in La Crosse, Wisconsin, lived here most of my whole life, lived, grew up a little bit in Rochester, Minnesota, and moved back still when I, before I graduated high school. When I was in sixth grade, I wanted to play percussion. I didn't really have an instrument in mind. I just knew I wanted to play drums. And I was always hitting pots and pans at my mom's house growing up and everything. And they told me that I needed to have two years of piano to get into the percussion program. So my mom lied for me and said that I did. And I tested in and just kind of fake it till you make it. And I was like, yeah, I can do that. And I never learned how to read sheet music or anything. So I would always just kind of play along with whatever they were playing, which helped me in the long run, being able to memorize music or learn music, just kind of on the fly, because I like, hey, still can't read music. And then I was in my sophomore year of high school and my little brother and stepdad were playing a cover band and they had a drummer that they were just starting to kind of play with. He ended up falling through. And at that time, I'd never played a full drum set. I'd only played snare drum and just timpani and little percussion instruments and everything. So my little brother was like, yeah, I think my brother can play 
drums. So they asked me like, Hey, would you want to try out for the band? I was like, absolutely. I got this for sure. And I panicked and I, the girl that I was dating at the time, her dad was a drummer. So he had a old first act drum kit in his upstairs of his garage. And it had like a cymbal held on by a drumstick. It was a mess. So I practiced <laughs> for a couple of weeks and then tried out for the band and somehow got in. So I was playing with them probably seven, eight years, just cover music and stuff like that. And I instantly fell in love with it. It's like my favorite thing in the whole world being on stage, but pretty much my whole music come up is just faking it till you make it really. <laughs> <laughs> well, my name is uh, Jason Barrow. I was born in Wabasha, Minnesota. I live currently in Winona. Growing up, my dad really got me into music a lot. I'd say about fourth or fifth grade, you know, I loved grunge music already and, and Nirvana was a big thing to me, but it, it didn't like make me want to play guitar until me and my dad watch Austin City Limits watching Steve Ray Vaughn just mm. give it everything he had on stage just to sweat. And I mean, to me, you know, Stevie, I still kind of look on some stuff, but he isn't like a major influence on me today. But the thing that I do take from that is give it everything that you have when you're on stage you know and that's when you watch stevie and you look back like i mean everything he had he gave that night so when we when you come to see a dead amsterdam show and i'm wiped up wiped out after the show it's because i gave it everything i had that night so i mean from my dad to stevie jimmy jimmy hendrix some bluesy stuff and course the grunge era that's what got me all into music i kind of been following along for a number of years here i think you guys started relatively recently i've been reaching out to you guys since i think we got july of 2021 i reached out the first time i mean it's kind of a quick kind of progression with you guys right coming together how did you how did dead amsterdam kind of meet up how does that all work it's your history me and joel we had a a little cover band two acoustic guitar thing going on and i think we decided that we wanted it to be a little bit more and we immediately looked for a drummer and levi was number one on the bill we very very quickly i i think levi sometimes called it auditioning for but it didn't matter he had the part anyway um, <laughs> So we we brought in Levi and very shortly after we brought Jason on the board and we just started hitting the writing immediately and started hitting shows immediately and, and it just kind of took off quickly, which we're very thankful for, you know. Oh, absolutely. I'm just going to go off of that. Um, I joined the band in a, about two years ago and I mean, six months after that, we pretty much played our first official show so we're we're going on playing shows now about 16 months in and we're actually looking forward to a really busy summer but we've been kind of quiet here lately for a reason you know seeing you guys open for some major headlining acts how did you get connected with some of those shows this past summer and also like what is your live show like it seems like you got on some good bills it's been amazing this last summer it was awesome yeah, we opened up for Puddle of Mud, Texas Hippie Coalition, Hinder, Blacktop Mojo. It's just, I don't know, I've just never been afraid to reach out to people. You know, the, the one thing you do know if you don't reach out and try is that's a for sure no. So I always just try and reach out. And these are my brothers here. I mean, I have so much faith in what we have here that I'm willing you know, to maybe say something that we, we currently, you know, aren't, but I know that we are because, you know, we haven't proved it yet, but just give us that opportunity and we're going to give you that high power show. It gives you a little bit of everything, you know, when you come to one of our shows, you're not going to feel like this is one kind of corner of a band, you know, hard rock, you know. Uh, Joel will attest to that. He's got some good, nice, deep blue soul vocals in there. We're kind of like a light rock blues to a heavy hard rock. I mean, you come to our show, you're going to see a very diverse 
entertaining show that's for sure a little bit of everything it's kind of hard to uh to a lot of people ask what kind well you know what kind of music do you play and it's 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 hard to, to nail down because we draw aspiration or inspiration. I keep getting those mixed up. <laughs> Inspirations from a, a lot of different things, but uh, I mean, it's we umbrella it under hard rock, you know, um, because there's grunge, there's southern rock, there's I like to call it some southern fried metal, you know. Um, so we throw it all throw it all out, everything we have on the stage, and uh, yeah, we it, to answer your 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 one quote part of the question was uh do we fit kind of in that realm with the bands that we open for is yeah you know uh i like to just call it a good old-fashioned rock and roll show you know you're gonna get what you paid for so what's cool is we even got you know certain songs that fit with each one of those bands that we opened for we got songs that you could kind of relate to they're similar to sounding to the era of hinder where they started coming out we got some southern rock style songs that fit with texas hippie and Blacktop Mojo. And then we also have songs that get a little heavier, like Puddle of Mud. You guys had a really exciting last couple of weeks, I think it was, at Pachyderm Recording Studio. <laughs> Just kind of talking about the grunge thing, too. There's some history there. So you guys got to, like, kind of uh, exist in the realm of some grunge legends and all sorts of musicians. What was that like? That was, that was absolutely incredible. <laughs> Walking the same halls as some of the caliber of musicians that have been there. I mean, uh, Nirvana recorded their In Utero album there. Live did and uh, Throwing Copper, which has, you know, some of their bigger songs with I Alone and uh, uh, Lightning Crashes. You know, uh, Soul Asylum recorded their Mudvayne, who got me into rock and metal. They recorded their End of All Things to Come album. Mm. The list goes on and on and on and on. I mean, Norma Jean recorded uh, Polar Similar. and Just incredible to, to know the history that was there and now that we put our little stamp on there too, you know, uh, it's truly kind of takes you back a little bit just to be at a place like that and, uh, record our debut album and just put everything we have into it. It's kind of a lot to take in, but, uh, you know, I think, um, we all truly feel, you know, it's something that, uh, we, uh, we're truly proud of and, uh, it's kind of making a statement, come out swinging, you know, it's let's uh, record our album somewhere with such history and, put our own little stamp in that same history book you know so yeah it was pretty awesome we didn't even realize it till a couple of weeks beforehand that we actually had our dates lined up the same exact week as what nirvana did at 30 years hmm. to the you know it's like the 30th anniversary we finished recording our album on kurt's birthday and then the next day would have been their last day recording so it was just Everything went by so quick, but I tell you what, in those four days as musicians, we bonded so damn good, and I, I feel like it was the best thing for us, you know, and that's why we're so so damn excited to get this album out and play these shows, because we're as tight as we've ever been, man. Just the, you know, just being there, I don't think it really hit until even just the second to last or last day that we were there that, you know, you're swimming in the swimming pool that, you know, Kurt or someone from Nirvana, Dave Grohl, you know, or maybe I slept in the same bed as him. It's kind of a big eye opener <laughs> going into the music industry. <laughs> you know, going through that process, I'm sure you just had the four days. So it was probably like a whirlwind, but what's your process like for writing music? I mean, you guys, is there, you know, you work on it together? What is that process like? Do you write fast? Well, it seems like you've been writing fast, just, you know, based on your, I think you said 18 months. What is it like putting a song together? Well, well it's, it started with uh, the first few songs I wrote and um, I had a guitar piece for because the very first two, we really didn't have Jason yet. And then I kind of presented it to the guys. And I was like, well, this is what I have, you know, for a guitar piece. I'm a rhythm guitarist through and through. I'm not, <laughs> I'm going to sit here and claim that I'm the best guitar player in the entire world. So they kind of formed the song around what I had. And then Jason came in and added some really good uh, lead parts that complemented the songs. But as we kind of progressed and matured together in the last, uh, you know, 18 months, it's more so somebody brings a riff to the table or, you know, Levi has a drum part and then, you know, it's just, we collaborate just kind of, and they start jamming, you know, we all start jamming down in uh, the basement and uh, 
where our practice area is at and then all of a sudden something will come out and then we'll just keep grinding to it and then i'll uh get a melody in my head of something that i think would be cool and then i kind of just mumble the you know the melody into the microphone until i have some words that stick and then i have an idea later on of what i want to write the song about and then i start putting lyrics to it and then you know i form the song around my lyrics around the song that's already kind of there and then once we have some lyrics and we have a bass sounding song then we kind of go in and we just keep playing it and playing it until we like have something that's needs to be changed or hey we're gonna add this part to it or you know and, and all of a sudden boom we have a a, a new song so our best stuff kind of definitely happens. comes naturally i think we've tried to Absolutely. sit down and kind of methodically write music where we're like all right this is going to be the makeup of the song and we're going to try to bring this bridge into this chorus and back into this bridge and if our best music that we write seems to be the stuff that happens naturally when we're all jamming together so we'll have some practice days where we'll sit down. It's like, all right, let's just jam and see what comes of it. And it, we could jam for two or three hours and we might only get one riff that we really, really like or sticks out of that two or three hours. And we usually would just build it off there. But we have such diverse styles of playing within the band. Joel's got a lot of soul to him. And Shane's really, really great metal guitarist as well as bassist. And Jason's got a lot of soul and just a deep, like dirty blues. And I've played a lot of kind of in the pocket rap stuff. So we have these styles that seem like they wouldn't work together, but when we try to stack them on top of each other, it almost seems like chaos. But when we really start letting it flow and building off each other, it seems like it is more cohesive. It's like a bunch of different separate parts of something that makes something cool. Mm -hmm. So we're pretty fortunate with that. Once we can all see that we're each vibing in the room together at the same time and everybody's having a good time, they're not stressing about, I don't like this, or I think we should do this. We're just in the moment, the vibe is there. And that's, I think that's what usually sticks. And Levi brought up a lot of really good points and it's, it ends up going so smooth. It happens organically down in, in the butcher's basement, we call it. The butcher's it's, den, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's where the magic happens, man. And uh, we're, we're fortunate to have a great practice space like that. Levi did a lot of work down there to make it happen for us, man. And it's just a cool, cool vibe down there. And it just sets the tone. And that's what happens, man. Our best music, music is made just like that on the fly, usually. So when do we get to hear the tunes? When's the date or you know, it'd be releasing we, singles or how, how's it working? So we don't have a, a set date for when the album is going to be released, but we're hoping tentatively, I'd like to say end of May or June-ish. That's up in the air still. Because right now we are in the mixing process. We have uh, Jesse Wolf and Travis Allen out of uh, Groundbreaking Sound Studios working on our mix for us. We uh, got our first couple of run throughs of the mix is done and uh we're still you know tweaking songs here or there before we send them out to be mastered by uh our friend kevin down and uh lives down in san antonio he's going to be doing our masters for us you know once it's mastered then uh we're going to try and push out two songs to kind of one or two you know to get people listening to some fresh new stuff kind of excited for the album kind of like a little teaser and then uh let those ride for a bit and then once we figure out you know hey we're all ready we're gonna do a big album release party somewhere in town and i'm across here and uh then you know hope like i said early summer we're looking to release the full album and uh let everybody else share the goodness that we've been kind of uh you know holding on to so so has there been any clear favorites or do you have a you know the first single kind of identified yeah uh it's actually one of our first songs the, the crowd loves it it's our song Gypsy Prince. I mean, I like I said, we've only been playing shows for 18 months. Uh, it was one of the first songs that I've ever written. It's been in our repertoire for as long as we've been playing shows. And uh, I mean, it's kind of matured into its new sound comparatively to what it sounded like when we first started playing it. But uh, it's really became its own entity. And, you know, people really love Gypsy Prince. And uh, 
that's kind of the, uh, the crowd favorite. I, I mean, like I said, we've only been playing for 18 months, but every time we play that song, I'll look into the audience and people are singing it back to us. And it's a pretty crazy feeling. Um, I never thought that would happen that I'd write a song and I'd look down and people are, are singing my songs, you know, as for a band favorite, we kind of like some of our heavier stuff, stuff that we're kind of delving into. I'm not sure if we all kind of have an accumulative favorite uh, that we can all agree upon, but uh, I just know that we have an album of 10 songs or so, and we really feel like there's no filler songs for the album. Each one is just so good in its own. We're going to have to kind of throw some uh, some papers into a hat and figure out what the second one would be if, if we, you know, or what we want to release first or you know, kind of set out there for the teaser for the album, but uh, kind of a mix up right now, which ones we're going to release first, you know. You know what the funny thing is, is uh, the, the first day at Packeter, first two songs that we did, me and Levi both thought we played like crap that day. <laughs> and, and those songs, those I was songs so nervous. <laughs> are pretty much our best sounding songs of the uh -huh. session. And yeah. one of them is Gypsy Print. So it's just like, wow. I mean, it's just, you're you're so hard on yourself and so many emotions come into that, <laughs> you know, period that it's like great relief to hear everything yesterday. As Joel was just talking about, we just went through the first phase of the mix, mixing process. But, you know, the funny thing is to getting back to that point is, uh, I said Gypsy Prince and River King sound really good. And I was like, well, I thought those were just going to be kind of, you know, almost album fillers. And he's like, well, if that's an album filler, holy <laughs> moly, this is awesome. <laughs> so like Joel said, it's going to be a great album, man. And we just, we want to make sure we don't rush it through the mixing process. So that's why we can't really give you a definitive date of when we're going to release everything, but we're definitely planning on hopefully, hopefully giving a teaser of a song or two being released mid to late april hopefully you know yeah yeah looking at the summer what's coming up for you you guys got any shows booked yet or what are you looking forward to we got a couple coming up in town here we've got in the town and the surrounding area march 25th we'll be playing with the heaping spoonfuls in winona at ed's no name that should be it'll be our first time playing that venue we've been there and watched some of our buddies bands it's a cool little spot just kind of a knock the dust off gig go have some fun get back in the swing of it, try a couple of our newer songs that we haven't played out live yet. Then we've got April 7th. It's a Friday up at Leo and Leona's. That's going to be a blast. We're playing out there with Mood House. I know they haven't been around too long, but they sound awesome. Super cool bluesy style. It'll be a fun show. Cool mix. Great room. The room's got some of the best acoustics I've ever gotten to play in. And then the 15th, we're going to be, we're bringing in another band. It's a, play with us we're very excited for that one they're called mother wind out of eau claire mm. and we'll be playing at the main right downtown lacrosse so that's saturday the 15th of april so those are the, the three is that the 14th <laughs> it's the 14th. 15th the 15th no, i'm looking at this wrong all right yep 15th. <laughs> yeah. so that'll be a fun one so those are our next ones within the next month and a half to two months around the area here and then we've got some pretty big ones tentatively that we've been in the works with some venues and talking to a little bit farther out that will be announced in the future. But I think it's going to be ones that people are really going to be excited to come see us at. I've been following you guys along on, you know, Instagram and Facebook, but what's the best Avenue for people to follow along? Where's the go-to spot for all things dead Amsterdam? I would say Facebook. I think we post, we're probably the most active on Facebook. I think it's because we're all getting a little older and it's a little easier to use <laughs> Facebook than Instagram. <laughs> what? Facebook, we Instagram, are. we do have a Twitter as well. Jason's kind of the, uh, the madman behind that. And uh, Shane all... just uh, worked in quite a while and set us up. Our, uh, we have our own website now. So, you know, we post a lot of stuff on that. We have a mailing list and, uh, I mean, like I said, Shane did most of the work on that, so I'll, I can let him tell you more about that. But uh, So the website's just www.deadamsterdam.com. We have upcoming events right there on the page. Uh, we have photos from previous events. At some point, we're going to have hopefully music, hopefully for sale right there on the site. But there's also, like uh, Joel mentioned, there is a mailing list, so we do send out emails to anybody that prefers to receive updates via email for upcoming shows 
ticket sales, merch, et cetera. So the website's always a good place to check too. We're most active on Facebook, you know, so. Yeah, we're not doing the TikTok. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> yet. I'm trying to push for it. <laughs> and our Facebook and Instagram are Dead Amsterdam Official, as well as our Twitter yeah. too. So if you're looking us up on our socials, it's just Dead Amsterdam Official right across the board and you'll find us. Lacrosse Local Podcast is a production of River Travel Media. Do you have an interview idea you'd like to share with us? Message us on Facebook at Lacrosse Local. Find out more about us at lacrosselocal.com. And you can subscribe to the Lacrosse Local Podcast on your favorite podcast app. If you like us, rate us five stars. We appreciate it.